sounds like it. All right, um, I, I have to admit something. I don't know how to program. Um, I asked Travis and it, he said it was okay. Um, I'm gonna try to sort of take you out of the engine room now because like you've been around in kind of marketing, kind of programming and everything like that. And I'm gonna try to gonna give you like an ups, uh, yeah, helicopter down view on how uh, uh, a two-sided two market like Elan's Odesk is working. Um, that's the one thing that I'm gonna try to like show you. Then I wanna like hopefully teach you a little bit about how you can view what you're doing right now uh, and potentially see it as a platform w rather than looking at it from a, like a pipe perspective. And the last thing I'm gonna no two more things I'm gonna present something that uh, you can call a minimum viable platform. And the last thing would be to sort of how do we actually monetize these platforms when you build them. So yeah. Short poll, how many know Elance or Odesk? Kind of half of the room. So basically what we are doing, uh, the two-sided market that we are trying to solve is that we have freelancers on one side all over the world with time available to work. And we pair them together with people who post jobs on our platform uh, that need stuff done. And then they come together on our platforms. Um, we are actually the world's biggest uh, within our industry, uh, meaning that we have around 8 million freelancers working on the platform and around 2 million businesses hiring them. These businesses post 2.7 million jobs right now every year. So it's extremely important that our platform is really good at matching uh, the jobs with the right, right kind of freelancers. Um, the kind of stuff that you get done is really everything that you can do without being physically present. So if it can be done through the internet, you can hire them on Elance or Odesk. Um, but looking at what platforms are and how to deal with, with two-sided markets, uh, back in the old days, business model used to work like this. You buy some stuff, then you'll create some stuff out of it, then you'll maybe ship it somewhere, and at some point you'll sell it. Um, Really, really basic stuff, like if you're a developer, you would probably hack all the day long, then you have to send it to some company who could print it on a CD or maybe even a disc, and at some point it would end out uh, near the con uh, with the consumer. Um, but these days, where all the magic happens now is, uh, is on platforms, and uh, I'll try to show you a couple of examples of why platforms are more interesting to, to build rather than uh, like pipe businesses. Um, so, a little guessing to get you warmed up. Who have really connected developers with the users of what they do? Wild guess? <laughs> these guys. So Apple and uh, Google have created these, yeah, I, what's it called? Uh, yeah, they're, they're stores where you can share whatever you built uh, together with people. Um, rather than you having this example of somebody programming something, then you print it and then you put, put it to a shop and then you hope that it sells. Um, Another example, uh, hosts and travelers who have connected these two guys on the platform. Airbnb, of course. So like in the old industry where you run your industry in a pipe, you would maybe have a hotel. What would you do if you want to have more guests there? You'll have to build another hotel. Um, but Airbnb turned that, uh, the whole thing around. So now they have like they have like what do you call it, like you can never run out of hosts on Airbnb, you just create a, a user and then you can put up your, you, you can put up your apartment and then they can exponentially increase whatever, how many hosts that they have and you, they can have as many users as they would like as well. Uh, another example, uh, video creators and video users. YouTube, of course. Um, so back in the old days, you would have to produce a TV program, then you would have to air it, and then hopefully somebody would like it, and then you can reuse re -use it. But de de these days, YouTube have, got, of course, just let people run wild and do whatever they want with their platform. And something that is interesting about most platforms is that these two kind of float together. Those who start out being producers, so they are, of course, also view videos, and those who view the videos might also start putting stuff on the platform. And the last thing that's what we're doing with work is that you can put up a job on our platform and then you can find freelancers all over the world to do it. And in an exponential rate because we have built a structure that makes you able to, to put up your job and as a freelancer you can register on our platform. So, showing these kind of really disruptive platforms, I think it's fair to say that platforms are increasingly important but also quite poorly understood uh, for, for most sakes. So we want to move away from like 
thinking in pipes and like thinking on how can we make this exponential and sort of get away from the transaction and make things scalable. And that's why we need a kind of an understanding of what a minimum viable platform looks like. And let me go through that. So basically what we have is on the one side, whatever you guys do, you have some producers and then you have consumers of your product and they create value by interacting around some certain topic. Um, so before we go on, try just to think about in your business, what is the specific value that is exchanged through what you do? Because we're going to use that and think about it when I elaborate on what the platform looks like. Um, so that, that's just what these guys have done in all sorts of different uh, directions. Um, and a very important statement already now is to try not to, <laughs> to do more value interaction than one thing at a time. Because a good example is LinkedIn. They started out as like just exchanging business cards and then you can make a connection. When they made that software work, they added the HR layer. Then you could sort of have HR people there and actually find people and, and so forth. If they tried to build everything at once, they would have failed completely. But they started with one interaction, made that work, and then they scaled from there. So basically, what your platform is supposed to do is to enable people to come from all sorts of different places of the world and technologies, etc. And you want to make them able to sort of exchange whatever they're doing uh, with your customers. So a platform is not just a platform, but there's three things that you need to know about it uh, to make it work. First thing is that you need to get both sides in. Uh, you need some kind of magnet that drives them in there. Uh, I'm going to elaborate a little bit about that. Then you need to provide the two, parts, two parties with a toolbox of stuff that it, uh, so that kind of enables them to work together. And the last thing is that you have to be a really damn good matchmaker through algorithms. Um, so let's just unfold what this looks like. The first challenge you have when you have a two-sided marketplace uh, as a platform is that you have the classical chicken and egg problem because think about Google, uh, how many people go in there every day, but if they wouldn't show any search result, I think there, they would be quite fast out of business. So you kind of need both what the consumer is looking for, but you also need to, to have the other side of the business. Um, and it's extremely important to have an offering for both sides, because if you only are able to attract one side of the business, for example, if, um, with Odesk, if we only generated job posts, but if we didn't have anybody to solve the problem, we would be quite fucked, to, to say it nicely. Um, and in order to do that, uh, there's all sorts of PR and marketing tricks that you can do. Uh, but just think about, sometimes you need to speak in one way if you're looking at uh, the producers, and sometimes you need to speak a little bit differently when you're speaking with, the, with your consumers of your, 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 of your platform. And then uh, the last thing is be sure to build in mechanisms that sort of convert users from being not only producers but also consumers. So. In the Odesk example, it's you, you can actually sign up as a freelancer and do stuff, do work for people, but you can also convert and actually hire people. So make sure you identify how you can actually make these two sides do both sides of the story. Then, in terms of tools, you need to provide the people. Uh, it's really important that you enable people to, to work together. Uh, I'll give you some examples on how we do it on Elance and Odesk. But another thing that is important is that what you do is also enabling reproduction. So you do, like when you actually get one customer, he can actually upload tens of thousands of YouTube videos that, rather than just uploading one. Because without that sort of uh, functionality, it will never like be exponential and be interesting to do a platform. So what we do uh, with Elan's and Odesk is that we have all sorts of uh, matching algorithms for like categories, subcategories, you can see how many stars that they received, you can search for freelancers, uh, etc. We provide tools like to where you can see what is your team doing, how many people have you hired, um, do you want to hire them again, do you want to fire them, etc. Uh, so we have provided all kinds of things uh, that makes people able to, to work together and I'm sure that when you think about the platforms that they're using that they have provided a whole lot of tools that support you as well. 
And then another extremely, we're at Elan Sodesk, we're kind of fanatical about our matching uh, metrics because with 2.7 million jobs posted every year, um, you kind of like your percentage of successful matches to go up because that's when we make uh, our money. So when you work with your algorithms, it's extremely important that you show the right kind of data for uh, whatever you ki kind of guys are exchanging in value. So you don't, there's a kind of a limited amount of times you, where you can show STN to, to, to your users. And that's where you really just really keep optimizing your algorithm, try to understand how do we show the best results to our users? Like, what is the key value that people want to exchange? And how can we, through our algorithm, be better at showing the best results? As I said, I'm not technical, but I'm sure you can see that it's better to, it depends who you are, but to show those two girls rather than the other guy. The way we do it uh, with our two-sided market is that you go into our platform, um, you select a category, a subcategory, give it, gives it titles, etc. So that's from the business side. We get a description of what is it that you need to need done. And the other side, we have people who have submitted all kinds of information about who they are, what they do, what are the skills, how many jobs have they done before. We want to show the guy with most stars to the, to the job because that's more likely that he will get matched correctly then. Um, and that's what we do. I bet you guys can think about all sorts of different things, that, like how you can experiment and what kind of data that you can match together to show the best thing for your, for your user. So say you succeed uh, building these three pillars that I showed you before. Um, then you start to get a whole lot of users. Um, and then you need to actually also be able to, to curate your platform, because with the more people you get on, the more of those guys we get. People will be messing around with your ecosystem, putting up jobs that they don't want to hire for, putting up yeah, things that doesn't make any kind of value. Um, so you need to able, enable your users to actually curate what's going on on your platform so you don't have to do it instead of them. Again, it, that's what's going to make it scalable, if you've, because if you have to do everything yourself, it's never going to grow. So things like voting, like on Hacker News, you can vote things up. Uh, you can rate the people that uh, you've been working with, or you can rate the video or whatever. Um, it could also be to report somebody who's doing stuff that really isn't appropriate for your platform. Another thing uh, is absolutely trust. If you want people to work together through the internet, it's absolutely critical that you like support them in any way possible. The way we do it is we have our commitment, and we'll tell you all about how we protect you. If you're doing e-business, you probably have seen this one a lot of times before. Um, but it's really about showing people that you can also trust the structure that you've built and get all the sort of stamps that you can on your website for that this is a place that people can trust. So that gives us this framework. You have producers and you have consumers, and then they exchange some value. You get them on board through your magnets, you enable them with a toolbox, and you make them sure that your algorithm is matching correctly. If we want to make money on uh, this successful platform, then there's kind of there's four ways four ways of doing it. Transaction cuts. That's kind of a classic. That you have something going on, you take a little percentage out of what they whatever they exchange. That's what we do at Odesk. That's what Etsy does. That's what Airbnb does, and that's definitely what Eventbrite is doing as well. Another way to make money is to for get get your users to pay for access to certain areas of your site. That could be uh, like on match.com, you're allowed to look at all the persons that they have there, but if you actually want to contact them, you'll have to pay a little bit extra. Um, it could also be pay for attention. So on YouTube or LinkedIn or Facebook, you're allowed to, if you do a status, you can pay for getting this post boosted or whatever you kind of want to do. And the last thing is uh, that you can get to get people to, to pay for tools as well. Um, like if they need extra functionality or they have some special needs or they're an expert or whatever, provide them some tools uh, for that and charge them a little bit extra. So that's basically the way of adding a monetizer. And I think there's just one more thing to, to add to how we do business. And you guys are the experts in API, so you can think about how can we apply the APIs that we're doing to, to a platform. 
Um, the way we do it on Elan's Nodesk is that we actually, through some simple HTML code, makes you able to, for example, if you want to show, if you have a website that uh, is within the mobile industry, you can take all our mobile designers and show on your mobile website. It could also be, sorry, it could also be if you have a lot of people who are looking for work, you can export all our jobs within a certain area of the world or a specific country and put it on your website. And if you're a freelancer and have a blog that has quite some significant traffic, you can also take your, traf uh, take your profile and say, you can hire me uh, on this platform. And then we have the structure available for you guys to, do, to hire food. So um, think about when you do stuff that you're not just building software uh, for the sake of it, but be sure to enable people to actually to interact because if you only build software without having this focus on building a platform, you're never going to reach any kind of exponential growth. Uh, that's kind of where you want to go if you want to make a lot of money. Um, so last thing is just to ask you guys how you guys think whatever you're doing now, how that can be turned into a platform. All right. I hope it made a little bit of sense. Thank you for listening to me. And if you want to like study it further, I definitely recommend a guy called Sangeet and on platform.info. He's kind of the king of the platform thinking industry. Uh, so, so be sure to check his website out. He's also the guy behind the, this, uh, this platform thinking model that I, I showed you guys.